So with my day words once again, where we did Corinthians, one in First Corinthians and Second Corinthians, part of the day was three prophets today, but we will look into one and then a little bit of the other one. Joel, Joel. Come with me to Joel, please, those who can. Verse 28, and it will come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Shall see visions. Now we know that it's like as a child come with innocence, the word of God must be in his heart and on his lips. What does that mean? If you have a child, my brother, my sister, you have a child and you will not teach him to, to speak. So when he's even 10 years old, you just have to... And that's all that you give your child. That's so unfair. That's so unfair if you would ever do that. And so towards you as a child of God, it's so unfair if you don't teach your spirit, and your life, your soul, to speak the language of God. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. So that the word of God can be in your mouth, so that the sons and the daughters can prophesy. Prophesy what? First of all, the future. No, prophesy the word of God. Because prophecy is to edify, to exhort, to encourage. Where's the encouragement? In the word. So the essence of prophecy is the word. And if you don't teach the child the word of God, you give him no vocabulary. Now I want to say there's three facets. Yes, there's the children in the next generation that must know the word so that when they speak, they can utter the word of God. Secondly, yes, there's the young men. You need to know the vision that God has for you. You need to come to an understanding. Not if you don't know God, now you need a vision to have security. Now your security is in Christ. But then in Christ and with Christ to find your destiny. You aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Be very successful in that. But that you will know strategy. Young men, you will know strategy. You will be a pioneer. You must be a pioneer, entrepreneur. You must be creative. You must be able to come into a place and you have strategies. You have answers. You have answers. That is if you are filled with the Spirit. Remember, Holy Spirit will be poured out because you have a mandate. There's a mandate. There's a mandate. Holy Spirit has an agenda from the Father why he is here until Jesus comes. There's an agenda. So you are filled with the Spirit for an agenda. Amen? Speaking in tongues, praying in tongues is, is aligning soul so that you can walk with the agenda that God has for you. Filled with the Spirit so that the Word can be accurate as a child, innocent child, where you are just a child and you can speak the words from the Father. A child that your dad in heaven, you can utter that what is pleasing unto him. Words that will stand for eternity from your mouth. Amen. Young men, the vision, because Holy Spirit has filled you. Thirdly, old men, dream dreams. Not dream dreams. All the people, you need to know what is it that God is showing you. Now, if I must put other words with that also, the dream is the global perspective. The global perspective. So the older people, uh, they say, how do you say that in English? Wisdom with a, with a gray. With the gray comes the wisdom, they say. But the wisdom is because the Holy Spirit wants to give the global picture. But the dream is to see something in a global perspective. Now I say that's for the three generations, but I say that's three dimensions that must work in you. First of all, you as a child must know how to communicate with your father. 
you as just a genuine, simple child of God in a simple relationship with your dad must know how to speak to him. You must have the words. You must understand when he is speaking. You will know your father is speaking to you if you know his word because then you know the language. Are you with me? If you don't know his word, you will be a child confused because you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You'll always be child. Always be child of the father. Because that child is always running to the father. God loves that. God loves that. That you were just with that innocence. When the father says jump, you jump because your dad said jump. You with me? Always enter the kingdom as a child. With the innocence. With the innocent faith. Not trying to reason out everything with a religion. Where soul wants to con take control. And then the young man, that's you. As you grow up, you must have be able to understand strategies. God wants to give you strategies. Not strategies because you don't really have faith in God, but faith in the strategy where you need to know everything. No, 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 no. But to find the strategy, very unlogic strategy to walk around Jericho. But the young man, he had that capacity. So there's this pioneering you. You must be this innocent child to, with a father, with the word of God on your mouth. But you must be able also be to, the young, to be the young man that you have answers, you have strategies. Hello? In the front line of a battlefield where you can have impact. You are called to make impact as that young man. Are you with me? And thirdly, there's a dimension where you must be able to walk in maturity. That's an old man will dream dreams. There must be a maturity in you, a dimension that because you are mature, you can see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is John 3.16, for God so loved the world. You've heard that before. Yeah, you understand that, you've heard the scripture, you know the word, you understand the vision in that. If you are mature, you will always be captured by that scripture that's giving you the general picture. The general picture of, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Yeah, that's a scripture that you know. And it's coming in and it's going. It's not like you're rejecting that scripture, but it will have meaning in you when you are mature. You will appreciate afresh. When you read that scripture for the hundredth time, you will appreciate. You know some, some old aunties and womies, when they go down memory lane, there's so much that they say, wow, wow, with appreciation, with thankfulness, wow, remember such a lot of good things. Hello? And so with the word of God, there must be this wow, when you are mature, and God can give you the dreams, God can give you the perspective, God can give you the global perspective of what's happening and what's supposed to happen. From that place, you can move. You can move with vision. From that place where you go as a child, you just have the word. You don't understand everything that's happening around you. My, my, my brother, my sister, you're not going to understand it more and more and more and more. The chaos out there is going to be so intense. You, I, we will not be able to understand it. But if we can go with what the Holy Spirit has for us, in a very simple, genuine way, as children of God, we will be able to speak the word. As young men, we will be able to see the vision and the strategies. As the mature, we will be able to understand the global picture that God is only the best for us. Oh, he will always protect you. Pray for his protection. Now, why did a lot of children of God die? Why did, were they martyred? Why this? Why that? Why that? Can you see a global perspective that he will protect you to do his will? He will not just protect you so that you are protected. He will protect you to do his will. And if it's the end, so that those who, can, who will come after you 
will take it further. Then that seed of your life need to die so that 30, 60, 100 fold harvest out of your life can come. But if the world, if the people need the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest, and it's the time for that, don't you steal that and just think, oh, the devil stole that person. No. No. God's, God's protection will always be there as you surrender yourself to him. God's protection for you to do his will, to accomplish what God has for you. That's the context of protection. But that's from the place when you are mature. When you are mature. So with a lot of questions that we could have. Immaturity is not that you have all the answers. But in maturity, you start to know what questions are important to have answers for and what questions you don't need an answer now. You will have that capacity. That's maturity. All those three dimensions is needed according to whether with this prophecy where Peter stood up and said on the day of Pentecost, this prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing. Hello? May God help you. May God help me. Amen. And then it says, verse 29, And also on my maid servants and, my, and the men servants. Why does he say that? Because, I mean, if it's children, young men, old men, they are all already included. Why again? It's saying here, for your purpose, for the things you need to do as a servant of God, as you serve God. Now, people say, I'm not doing it for God, I'm doing it with God. No, that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is you are doing it for God. It's not just you are doing it with God. You are doing it also for God. That is a worship lifestyle where you are standing with what you do before the Lord. And whatever you do it, you do it as if unto the Lord. So don't be deceived in that one. Are you with me? Don't just say, no, I'm doing it with God. I'm not just doing it for God. I, you could mean I'm not in performance to God. I'm not in a performance to do certain things for God, to win his favor. No, I'm not there to win his favor. But as a worshiper in spirit and truth, I want to do it for him. Are you with me? So don't, I know there's a lot of quotes about that. Um, but just see the heart. The heart is most probably that you mustn't be in performance towards God. But you will do everything for him, but also do it with him. Because you cannot do it for him if he does not help you to do it for him. Amen. May God help you and me. Amen. So for the, for the servants, for the servants, the Holy Spirit will empower you. Is that not Acts 1 verse 8? All you leaders and students, I see you writing all the way. I'm so blessed by that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When you will be my witnesses, when? When the Holy Spirit will come over you, you will have power. Power for what? To do a lot of miracles. No. Power to be my witnesses. To be my witnesses. Because my brother, my sister, the word says, at the end of the day, people will stand before God and they say, but did I not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out devils in your name? Did we not do, we did all these signs and there was manifestation of power, man. A lot of amazing things happened, confirming that what we did was right. Not necessarily. The deception can be so great that the enemy will be even able to fake it in that way. How will you be strong? Start from the place of your spirit where you pray, where you speak, where you sing in accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. From the place of perfection, perfect prayer, perfect utterance, perfect song. You have it in you. That perfection is in you. But if you don't never pray in tongues, how do you believe? Will you be accurate? How do you believe? Will you, you will not be deceived. If God has given you that. Come on, guys. And the guys that you know that is not speaking in tongues, yes. God wants that for them also. 
Don't be selfish. No, you will not judge them. You better not judge them. But if you love them, you will speak to them about what God wants to give them. That they don't have to run to Joburg. But they can take the Ferrari. Are you with me? There's so many places where we're supposed to go with the Ferrari. May God help you. So they're praying in tongues. Another time we will talk about how tongues can develop in, in so many different ways for so many different purposes. I remember in Pretoria when I worked there to work off the medical bursary, I got a lift from with this one guy. He had, I don't know what the name was of that bike, but the bike, it's one of those you are here and the next moment, oh, you are there. <sighs> And uh, I prayed in tongues very, uh, very, a lot of times, you know, very loud even. Sock with a guy who gave me a lift. He always told me I must pay extra money because I have angels going with. He was an atheist. And uh, one evening I just felt I must pray in tongues now. So I pray in tongues. The next day that guy spoke to me at the job where he was working with me. He said, no, he was going for it on, with his car on, on the gravel road. And it happened, I mean, he went in a, he had quite a few accidents of rolling and doing this and whatever, whatever. And he hit the sand, sandbank, sandbank. Call it like that. With his car. And it was in such a way that he would go. And this was serious stuff. And... I don't know, I, I don't really believe in God, but I just called out his name, and suddenly the car was just, he just stopped. He said, I'm not serving your God yet. I, I don't, I don't, well, I, see if I spoke to him, you know? But that was, that was, that was amazing. You know, and he was totally disturbed by that. When I found out, it was exactly that moment, that time, that I prayed in tongues. Sometimes, oh, come on, man. There's such a lot of stuff that you will only realize in heaven. But God orchestrated if you're available from your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Even upon the servants. Verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Yeah, what can I say? I will show wonders. There will be wonders in the heavens, wonders on earth. A lot of what we just said now about people that will be able to do a lot of wonders, but from demonic sources. But God also going to do wonders. And my question will be, are you just going to see the, the, the signs of the end time out there because of any form of sign? Or are you interested and are you responsible to make sure that you can understand the signs that Holy Spirit is giving? Signs in the heavens. Where? You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hello. And that's a different dimension. It's not the heavens where literally God is sitting on the throne. But there's a dimension in the heavens where you are with Christ in heavenly places. And from there, you will see power. You will see what God will do as you take up the authority in prayer with the word, with what God has for you. If you understand your stature with Christ in heavenly places, you will see miracles from the Holy Spirit if you are filled with the Spirit. And on earth, practically, not just in the heavens, you still see miracles with your prayer, with what you speak, with what you do. No, in, in practically on earth, you will understand this is Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit. Are you with me? The sun shall be turned into darkness. What is he talking about? The natural light. The natural understanding of things will not be there anymore. What is allowed now through governments, what is okay today, 60, 70 years, would, it's, they would say this is freaky. How on earth will ever, ever that be possible? That that will be legalized or this will be right. That will be okay to do. It's impossible. 
And more and more people are just deceived, deceived, and it will be okay. And the, and the sun will be turned into darkness. The light will go down. There will be no, no, no normal, reasonable, godly understanding except through the church. The Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ, that must shine through you. Are you with me? You will see the blood. There will be horrific things that will happen. But you will be protected to worship him, to live for him, and to do his will. Amen. More and more. Let it be so. All this will happen before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Holy Spirit will work until you find the day of the Lord. Now that is with the second coming. But my brother, my sister, that is also tomorrow. The day of the Lord where you say, God, come and show me. This is the end. This is the end of this rubbish in my life. These rubbish will go left. I will go right. These temptations will go left. I go right. This, these fears will go left and I will go right. These performances that just dry out my bones and, and I'm just tired and I'm just finished with all these chachas. No. The day of the Lord is the day of judgment where there's judgment over that thing. And you say, this will go in Jesus' name. You will bow your knee. You have no right to be with me. Are you with me? So if you're walking in the Spirit and you, fall, you are led by the Spirit because the Spirit is poured out over your life, you will not fear that day. You will not fear tomorrow. You will understand it's God's protection to deal with that rubbish where God brings you in T-junctions, T-junctions, T-junctions. Are you with me? To choose. We will talk about Jonah how God brought the T-junctions every time with a storm, with a fish, with a tree, with a worm. T-junctions for him to deal with certain stuff. It's the day of the Lord. It's my day, God said. It's not your day. Now tomorrow, let it be God's day in your life. May God will have the final say. And God will say, right, and these things in your life, left. These ideas to the left, you to the right. God, I thought this was for you. If you bring your life under the guidance of the Spirit before Him, the T-junctions will be there. And your days will be the days of the Lord. Not just for yourself, but only Holy Spirit can help you, can help me to bring that and to do that. Amen. It shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It shall come to pass that everybody lives a perfect life will be saved. No. That even in your brokenness, even in whatever you go through, don't be ashamed, but call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. I'm not talking about just calling on the name of the Lord and you're saved from eternal hell. I'm talking about tomorrow, call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved from that snare from the enemy. Call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved from that situation that can suffocate you, that can drown you. Call on the name of the Lord. He will be there. Don't wait until you're perfect. You will never be perfect. But God is faithful. God is gracious over you. As you call upon him, he will be there, ready to save you. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. Mount Zion and Jerusalem. Mount Zion, the platform God gives you to worship him. On the platform, you will share your opinion. On the platform, you will, when you have success. I've seen that people in Kriari, and even when they are sent out, sometimes I feel discouraged, sometimes I feel great. Lord, sometimes, Lord, where did we build wrong with some of these guys? I don't know. Because when they get a platform of ministry, just like things change with them. But God must help you, Gail. God must help me. Because pride before the fall. Pride was when the man, the, the, the angel in charge of worship, when he got the platform, Lucifer, most beautiful angel in heaven, 
When he got the platform, he took the glory for himself. Mount Zion, you are saved when you, you are in that place to give him alone the glory. When you are successful, that you will give him the glory. When you are in trouble, you will give him the glory. In spite of still I will honor you. You are saved. You are, you are in a place of safety. When you understand that, that with every platform God gives you, you will give him the honor. That is Mount Zion. That's not the mountain where the devil giving you the, the kingdoms of this world. But that's where you stand with God. And Jerusalem, the name, the word Jerusalem, that means habitation of peace. The place where peace dwells. The peace of God. Not just a ceasefire. But where God as the peace dwells. Where God himself dwells. Where there's peace. Where there's safety. Where there's security. Where you are safe with your father. Safe with your hero. Safe with your king. Safe with your standby, counselor, guide, the Holy Spirit. Safe with your brothers and sisters. It's walking in maturity led by the Spirit. In that place you are safe. But because we are so many times, not are, were, we're going to change, in the flesh, then so many times we don't feel safe with one another. May God help us, amen, to be changed. I leave you with that from Joel. And go for a landing with Jonah. Joel, Amos, and then Obatya. Okay, and then Jonah. I just want to say, if we're talking about the servants of the Lord, talking about your destiny, talking about what you're supposed to do tomorrow, we can run away. We can run away from the things that God actually expects of us because we don't like what we hear. And that's not physically we run away. That's in your mind, in your head. You get this thought, and it's actually from God. And you run away from that thought, finding very nice other stuff to do, other priorities, other things to do. But this run away happened within two, three seconds. Where you got actually from God... Stand up, go and do this. And he didn't come as, stand up, my son, go and do this. No, he came as a normal thought, and you didn't even realize it's God. But as we grow in him through the Holy Spirit, you will come to know that that, just that normal thought, that's coming in a normal way, that that is the Lord. And when God gives you that what you need to do, that you're not just within five seconds or ten seconds in your mind, you run away from it. You get your ship in your mind, in your heart, and off you are. And then you don't understand the storm. But the storm is God's miracle. You stand against the storm in the name of Jesus Christ because he's from hell, and all the devils organize it in your life because you are walking with the Lord Jesus. And meanwhile, you are chasing the devil and he's not even involved. He's thinking, are you crazy? I'm not involved. <laughs> Hello? And by God's mercy, he stands the storm to lead you into repentance, to lead you into the place. So you need to hear from the Holy Spirit. God, is this storm a place where I'm not in your will? Or is this storm to show who you are? And your greatness. Is this storm there so that I must rise up and stand up with authority and say, be still. And that God be edified and glorified through what happened. Is this storm from you or is it from the devil? And Jonah had that capacity <laughs> to understand that. When it was the storm, he said, it's me. Praise God for the humility and honesty. In humility, there's honesty. In honesty, there's humility. Are you with me? And with honesty, he says, it's me. And amazing, he believed. He believed in God as a God of miracles, even though he was in a wrong place. 
You can be in the wrong place, but believe in your God that can do miracles. And I mean, the miracle was, throw me over, and the storm will subside. It will stop. Wow. That was a step of faith. That was believing in, in God that can do major, 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 a lot of miracles. So your life can cause a storm for others also. But as you surrender to God, you can have the faith and you can have the assurance that a storm will stop even for others. When you choose to walk in His will. You with me? May God help you. May God help me. Let it be so. So, they did it and boom! And the fear came on the people in that boat, knowing that, whoa, he's God. Not our gods that we call upon, but Jonah's God. That's really God. So here this guy goes down. Second miracle. The fish. And for three days, there's no fermentation. What do you call that? His flesh is not getting fermented by whatever is there in the stomach. Hello. Okay. See yourself three days in the stomach of a fish, man. Yo. God, I just chose to obey. I just repented. I just I gave myself with all honesty, and this is how you reward me, that I'm being eaten live by a fish, and I'm going to have a very, very, very slow death. Bring his life before the Lord. Next miracle. Never saw the fish spitting. But yeah, this fish spit him out, this guy. Hallelujah. You're with me. Sometimes you can feel, I did this thing for God, and I even repented. But now, it's even worse. Inside of a fish, it's worse than in a boat. Are you with me? And we out there, okay, you will go with a message. You will go with a message. And when the people repented, he went to go and sit and see how the word will be fulfilled. But he didn't focus on the heart. Let's go with verse 2. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarsus. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God. I mean, he just received that grace and that mercy all the way through with a major lot of miracles. Slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. God rose up in anger with Jonah. One who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O oh Lord, please take my life. What a tantrum. Is it right for you to be angry? God asked him. Guys, many times when that anger or irritation or frustration with people, and even yourself, but with people around you, arise. You say, where does that arrogance come from? God's not allowed to give those guys grace, and you will not give them, but he has given you such a lot of grace in your life. Do you have the right to be angry? Do you have the right to be having that frustration, irritation, and that issues with people? Do you have that right? God asking you. Because if you know my grace, if you are thankful for my grace and my mercy over your life, then in the fruit you will know you are thankful. And the fruit will be, you will stop this, these things with people. So easily frustrated, irritated, anger. Ah, God help me. I don't know about some of you guys also. But that we can come into that place. We have the right to be angry. And even, you know, even with this guy throwing a tantrum, he didn't repent yet. But even in the tantrum, God's grace, God's mercy, he organized for him a tree, a, a, a wonder tree. What do we call it? A miracle tree. 
God organized for him to have some shade. But God wants to teach him a lesson. So it's not just the amazing storm, miracle storm with a miracle calmness in the storm, a miracle fish and the miracle out of the fish. Hello? It's not just the miracle tree. The next day is the miracle worm also. Okay. And tell me a worm that can eat a whole tree within a day. Hallelujah. But okay, it withered and died. What am I saying? For God to show him. What you are, what you have, is just grace. Even if there's a worm, the worm can take away from you what you feel is great. Hopefully there's not a worm working in your life because of ungratefulness. Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, I leave you with that. In whatever you come with, when you are filled with the Spirit, there will be grace, there will be mercy, there will be patience, that will, there will be long-suffering. There will always be the faith that God has an excellent plan with this man. Because the Holy Spirit will pour out the love from the Father into your hearts. Romans 5.5, five, give me a high five. High five is what? Holy Spirit will pour out the love from the Father in your hearts. So if Holy Spirit works, then the fruit of the Spirit will be there. Essence of everything is love. God, come and help us. We trust you for that. We pray that, Lord, we will not ignore your Spirit. Holy Spirit, forgive us in that. But please, Jesus, as John said, you will baptize in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Come and baptize us afresh in the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, even as we pray with people, find prayer partners that become strong from our spirit in the Lord. Thank you that you will help us, Lord, and that we will see the miracles of God, that we will not forget the miracles of God because we choose an attitude to be thankful, to be grateful for what you've given us. Teach us that humility. We thank you for that, Father. We can do that. We can go and be led by your Spirit. We choose to be sincere as a child. We choose to come with your strategies, not our own as the young men. We choose to hear your global perspective, your dream as the mature. Lord, come and do that and help us that as servants, we will do it, not by power nor by might, but only by and through your spirit. That's our prayer in Jesus' name, as all say. Amen. Amen.